Hello, this is Teresa. I'm back with another card tutorial for Dare to be Artsy. I will be putting together three different cards today. They will all have a similar background that is created using brush markers, and it is a very easy technique to do. I'll also be featuring a layered stamp set from Dare to be Artsy along with another sentiment set as well. So let's get started. So I'll start by creating the backgrounds first. I'm going to be using a piece of white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half on each one of these. I will be trimming some of these down later. And what you'll notice is I am using a misty and a clear stamping block to guide me in drawing the lines. And one of the things I found that helped is to make sure to start drawing off of the paper and across on the other side. So that's why I didn't put it directly in the corner whenever I put it in here with some temporary adhesive. And what I'm doing with the markers is because everything I'm using today has both a brush tip end as well as a fine tip end is I will get some variation in the length, not the length, but the width of the stripe and even some color va variation by using both the thin end as well as the brush tip end. So I just slide the block around and draw lines, you know, as randomly as I can until I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. So this first panel that I'm doing is basically just a teal shade as well as a lime green shade in contrast for that. And then the next one I will be doing is very similar. I'm just going to be using an orange as well as kind of a mustardy yellow shade for this second second panel. Now one thing I would advise is probably even though I have sped this up quite a bit, it probably would have been better if I had slowed down a bit more than I did whenever I was filming this in real time because I made a few little mistakes here and there, some of which I was able to trim off and make, make work anyway. I, I wanted one of the panels to be going vertical rather than in the portrait orientation. So as you can see, this panel I've turned the opposite way and I'm using a T-square ruler to guide me as far as drawing all my stripes onto the card panel. And using this kind of technique, it's even possible to create a plaid pattern if that was something that you wanted to do. And it's really easy and markers are fairly inexpensive. Now I'm going to be moving on to the layered stamp set I'm using from Dare to Be Artsy. I'm going to be stamping this outline image three different times across the cardstock. And by the way, I will be linking to the supplies below in case you're interested in finding out where to get these for yourself. So first I'm stamping this flower outline image three times in black ink. And then I will be using the layering pieces in the stamp set to color these in. So this is a faster way in general to color some flowers. Uh, there is a salt, there are solid pieces that match up exactly with the outline stamp. And so I'm going to be using one color when I stamp these, but when, by the time I stamp it with this second larger layered piece, it will make the middle of it look a little bit darker while the petals on the very outside edge look a little bit lighter. So this is a way to get more mileage out of existing uh, inks that you may have and not necessarily have to use six different inks just to get some color variation. And after this I'll move on to the second color in the center which will when it first gets stamped down look really dark but it will lighten up. It won't look quite as dark after it's dry. Again I'm using the same ink both on the first layered stamp as well as the second larger layered stamp in doing the same thing with the third flower all the way there on the left and that completes stamping of this card panel. And for the next panel I've cut a piece of cardstock into a four by four inch square piece. Please note the position of that small stamp that I've placed it on one side because it will not be moving I will be moving the paper around and stamping initially with the same color four different times. So basically what I'm doing here is forming 
a little bit of circle so I'm going to have what looks like a little flower wreath by the time I'm done stamping everything. So this is the base layer which I'm stamping with the same color of yellow ink and then I will move the stamp to a slightly different position that does not overlap with where I was previously stamping and I will do the same process again. I think this works best if you have a positioning tool like the Misty. It doesn't mean that you could not do this with a block because you could certainly do that if you have the patience to do that. I don't, so that's why I use the Misty for these types of techniques. A lot of what you're going to be seeing on the screen is pretty repetitive. Uh, once I stamp down this base layer of these two different colors, I'm going to stamp on the outline on each of the yellow flowers. So I've chosen the slightly darker, almost orange-ish looking ink to stamp the outline image right on top of all the flowers I previously stamped in yellow. And then I'm doing the same thing on the coral colored flowers with a slightly darker ink for the outline. And I'll just keep turning that piece of cardstock around until I've stamped over each one of those floral images. After this point, I'm going to be using the leaves in the same stamps, stamp set and I'll initially place it in one position and pretty much this is the same thing that I've been doing all along. I put it in that position, pick it up with a door of the Misty. I grab my first ink, which is the lighter color that I'm using for the base layer and I'll stamp that down and I'll keep flipping the paper in, in a particular direction until I've stamped it four times. After which I pick up the stamp after cleaning it and I move it to another position and do the same process all over again. After completing this, there is a more detailed layer to this leaf stamp, so I will be repeating this process using that stamp with a darker green ink color. Uh, one thing I will note is the ink color I chose in this case wasn't quite as dark as I would have liked it to be. Also, I was slightly careless in as far as positioning it initially, so I was a little bit off as far as the stamping. However, I didn't let this bother me because after all, handmade cards are not meant to be perfect. As a, I've heard one of my fellow crafters say, they're handmade, not Hallmark. So I think a little bit of imperfection is just fine. It, you can certainly take the time to position it to make sure that it is exactly right if this is something that that you don't like. And now that I'm completing all of the layered stamping, I will be doing a few more things to this panel a little bit later on, and I'll come back to it at that time. So moving on, I have another piece of white cardstock, again cut to 4 by 4 inches, and I've positioned the solid leafy branch in the corner facing inwards. So I'm going to be using two different ink colors on this one. And after I stamp it four different times, I change the position of the stamp. I change the color of the ink that I'm using to a lighter color. And I keep turning the card a quarter turn, cardstock a quarter turn, until I've stamped four different times and filled up that space. Uh, I'll eventually add some more detail to this as well. At, at this stage, I decided to go ahead and do some embossing using the outline image that comes uh, with this set. I'm not going to do this on every single stamped image, and I'm taking my time to be careful about lining that up so that that is not way off whenever I'm doing the embossing ink and embossing. Uh, just to make things a little bit faster, I went ahead and stamped all four sides, trying to be careful not to put my magnet over a place where I previously stamped the ink. So at this stage, I don't even use a magnet at all to hold it. And then I'm going to grab some gold detail embossing powder and add that to this panel and heat set that. And then I'll put it aside and come back to add some details to it a little bit later. 
So as I was coming up with the ideas for today's cards, I was thinking of some of the items in my craft room that don't get a whole lot of use. And one of them is all the fun uh, jelly gel pens that I have in my collection. This particular set is by Jelly Roll and it came from a fluorescent set. And I don't remember the exact name, but I, like I said, I will leave some links to products you use so that you can find them later. Uh, I made sure to choose a contrasting color for each one of the flowers and I'm just going in and adding some details. I mean I started with adding dots over the center of the flower where the stamp uh, had the little circles drawn and then I went around the edges of those petals on the inside to add a little more detail and interest in that contrasting color. And the nice thing about these particular gel pens is they are nice and opaque, so they do provide a nice contrast against the base color that's already been stamped on. So I found this to be such a fun little step, and it really adds something without being too terribly time-consuming. So as I finish up the one on the inside, I hope you'll think of ways to use something in your craft room that you haven't touched in quite some time. And now I'm going to go back to the floral wreath that I created earlier and I'm going to use the same gel pens to add some more detail to each one of these flowers. This time I did not use contrasting colors so I'm basically sticking with the same color, same general color as the base flower here and using these pens to add a little more detail to those inner petals I guess because I don't can't think of what to call them. Uh, I'll add that detail to all the flowers and then I decided as I looked at this that it really did need some more contrast and I thought the perfect way to do that would be by adding a darker center to each of the flowers and even though the stamp set does come with a stamp that you can uh, use to color the inside of each of these flowers at this stage since I had already added that gel pen and it would just get smeared if I try to do any more stamping. I decided it was just as easy if not easier to just use a marker and fill in the center of each of the flowers with a dark brown color. And once I finish that I will fussy cut all the way around the edges of this stamped image so it looks more like a wreath overall. And by the time I get done with that I thought the center of the flowers still needed a little something, so I end up going back to those a little bit later after cutting out this entire image, and I added some dots with the yellow gel pen to each one of the centers, and at that point, I was pretty happy with the way that it looked. So I'm back with the circle of all the leaf or branch images that I stamped earlier, and I'm going to add some more details to this as well. I'm using the lime color gel pen to add more contrast to the dark green stamped images and I'm adding some dots using the fine tipped end of this dark green marker on the light colored leaf stamps. So that's what it looks like. And now it's time to start working on constructing the cards. So to add some contrast to this first card I'm going to cut some black cardstock and I think it was about two and three quarters inch wide as far or in height and then I cut it to five and a half the other direction. I'm going to add some in, not embossing powder but I'm treated it with an anti-static powder tool. I thought I had stamped it and then realized that I had not actually stamped it at this point so I went back treated it with a powder tool again and this time I made sure to actually use my Versamark ink and apply it to the sentiment stamp I intended to use and stamp it there right in the center of that panel. And I'm going to use some detail white embossing powder and heat set that and I will put the flower image just above it but I'm going to leave some black space above as well as of course below because the sentiment is there. So after wiping away the excess powder I'm going to trim down above and below that trio of flowers so that it fits 
and shows black on either side. Obviously I need enough room for the sentiment and also leave some room at the top for the black to poke out. And I love using a little bit of black with my cards that have a lot of colors in them because it 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 makes a more sophisticated looking card or at least it does in my opinion. It ties in with the fact that I've used black as the main color for stamping the outline images to start with. So it just helps to create a more cohesive card in the end. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting out a piece of black fun foam because I'm going to glue that to the back of my black panel and then that way I don't have to use a whole lot of double-sided foam adhesive tape which can be kind of costly and with something this size it just works better especially if you have to put if you're going to be putting it through the mail that it's just even all the way across the entire panel. So I'm just add, adding some liquid glue so that I can get it positioned just right onto this panel before I attach it to a card base. And I will trim off a little bit from actually from the top and base of this before I, before I do put it on a panel. I just didn't show it in the video. So now I'm moving on to the floral wreath. Now I'm going to start uh, preparing to put that all together. And I needed something to stamp the sentiment on so I found a piece of white cardstock, just a scrap that I had laying around and I'm using the same peachy pink ink that I used earlier to stamp the base layer of one of the flowers and I'm just using an ink blending tool to add color across that piece of white cardstock so that it will match the colors that I've already been using in my project. And I will set this aside to dry for a few minutes before I come back to it and emboss it with a sentiment. Uh, I decided I was going to create a square card out of this. And one of the main reasons I ended up doing that is because when I stamped all the flowers in that wreath earlier, because I had started with that four by four inch piece of paper, that meant uh, some of the leaves actually got cut off because they were sticking off the edge when I stamped it. So I created, I decided to cut down that stripe panel so that I could line up the cut edges of those leaves with the end. Now you may have seen what I was doing just before I'm getting to this step, which is I used one of the, the golden yellow marker to just scribble around the edges of a piece of white cardstock in a slightly larger size. And that way it provides some contrast to the layer above it and then when I do put this all together I will have a white card base a white square card base underneath the entire thing so again I'm using Versamark ink to stamp my sentiment I'm using the sending hugs sentiment it's from the you've got mail stamp set so so far today both the all sentiments that I used came from that same stamp set so I'm using white detail embossing powder again, and after heat setting it, I'll trim down my sentiment or the paper around the sentiment. And after I do that, I'll cut little fish, little fish tail at the end on either side before I attach it to the project. And I'm using double side foam adhesive tape that will go underneath the sentiment that I have cut out. Uh, before attaching that, I'm also going to pop up the floral wreath that I created. Uh, first, I'm going to glue down the stripe panel to the base layer below that. This is the one I was describing earlier that has the marker scribbled around the edge. But once you glue this down, you can't tell that the entire panel wasn't colored before. So I'm going to add the adhe foam adhesive to the back of the wreath right here. And once I do that, one thing I want to be careful of is that when I turn it over that I position it so that the cut edges of those leaves line up with the edges of the stripe panel. If that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, I think when I turn it over, it will in a moment. So I'm removing all the backing from the foam adhesive tape. I'm going to turn it over and then I'm careful to position it so you see the flat edges of some of those leaves will line up with the flat edges at the on the sides of the square. 
Hopefully that makes sense. So finally, I'm attaching the sentiment right across the center of the card. And the final thing I will do is put that on a square or card base. At least you'll see it towards the end of the video. So now moving on to the vertical stripe panel I created near the beginning. I'm going to trim this down so I can get rid of partly, in part, some of the messy ends where I was a little bit sloppy at the beginning. And I also want to have a matted edge around this so it turned out just as well that I needed to cut that off. I created another mat that would fit exactly around the leafy stamp image and you may have noticed that I actually die cut that into a smaller square so it's smaller than it was when I initially finished. And so I'm adding a sentiment to a piece of vellum and I'll add some gold detail embossing powder to that to match what I've already put onto some of the leafy branches on my card panel. And then I will put all this together. I won't bore you by showing you all the gluing that's involved, except apparently I did anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to add some multi-matte adhesive to the back of the sentiment so that it doesn't show through, show through the vellum whenever I put it across the leafy panel there. And now that that's finished, I will glue that down to the card and that will complete it. So here are all three cards again. I am so glad you joined me again today. I hope you will take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and leave me a comment if you'd like. Until then, I dare you to be artsy.